Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to show you my new scientific instrument, which can be found in this box. It is a metallurgical microscope and it is made by an Indian company called Radical Scientific. And uh, just to make it clear, this is not a promotional video, but it is a unboxing and uh, review video. I bought this instrument from my own money and uh, I bought it because I was curious about it and I wanted to have a more decent microscope than I currently had. So then uh, this microscope was uh, for sale at a reasonable price. I found it on eBay, so I purchased it. And now in this video, I'm going to assemble it and show you all its parts and all its uh, properties. So let's uh, see what is inside the box. So you can see that this specific instrument is the RM55TX model. And if we look into its uh, instructions, we can uh, see the following things. So first we meet the contents, which is just a summary of the following pages, and then some introduction and some application of the microscope, followed by the names of the instrument parts and with a picture as well, so we can identify each part and then some unpacking instructions, how to start with the microscope, and then how to adjust uh, the different parts of the microscope, and then some user instructions, and then some description of the lenses, and then some maintenance routine uh, advices from the manufacturer, and also some handling advices from the manufacturer, and some other stuff related to uh, Q&A, and basically that's all. So then let's start to unpack the box and see what is inside. So after removing this thick uh, protective foam, we can see all the parts. And then these tubes contain the 10 times uh, wide field eyepieces. And then we have another set of these tubes, which have the 20 times wide field eyepieces. So these will go into the trinocular, which you see later on. And then we have four tubes for the lenses, but they are already installed in the nose piece. So that is not uh, in the place. And then this guy is the lamp house. So this contains the halogen tube. And then following with the light source, these two small things are some color filters, which go into the lamp house. I will show it later. And then here comes another uh, main part, which is this uh, trinocular head. So this is where the eyepieces go and this is where we can attach our uh, camera. And then this will be the main part of the microscope. It's already pre-assembled. So we have the stage, uh, the stand and the nose piece uh, together with the lenses as well. So this will be easy to further assemble. And then this box here is the power supply for the lamp. So this will be our adjustable light sources uh, power supply box. And then we have this 100 times dry uh, text box. This is the largest magnification lens and it is not uh, on the nose piece, as you can see. So I have to replace one of the four lenses and uh, attach this to the nose piece. Then this is just a simple uh, power supply cable. And as you can see, it has the European plug. Since I'm located in the EU, this is what I need to use. And then finally, here we have a replacement bulb. So this is the halogen uh, lamp which is used uh, in the lamp house to illuminate uh, the specimen so it's a simple uh, light source as you can see hopefully see it's a bit too bright maybe but this will go into the lamp house and then the final piece is just a vinyl uh, cover for the microscope and then uh, there is also a small cloth in this so the first part that we are looking at is the power supply for the light source. It has a potentiometer, an on-off switch and the connector for the lamp as well. 
and on the back side you can see that we have the main power cable and that is just a normal power supply cable that you for example use for your computer and in my case it has an EU plug because I'm located in the EU. And then this thing is the lamp house. This will be connected to the power supply. As you can see, there is an aperture inside this lamp house. And with the help of that small metallic arm, I can adjust the diameter of it. So I can adjust uh, the diameter of the light beam, which will uh, reach the surface of the specimen that I'm investigating. And of course, if we manipulate the diameter of the beam, that also changes its brightness. So narrower beam will mean less brightness and the broader beam will mean uh, more brightness. But then of course, uh, this also affects uh, the quality of the image. And then the next part is this trinocular head. As you can see, we can adjust the interpupillary distance. So the distance between your eyes, basically. So if you have wider eyes or narrower eyes, it doesn't matter because you can adjust it. And then on the side, we have this uh, small pin, which is to change between the eyepieces and the camera. So if I pull it out, then I can look through the camera. And if I push it in, then I can look through the eyepieces. And then basically this is the wall piece. It's just a piece of mixture of metal and uh, plastic, nothing extraordinary. Then the next set of parts is obviously the eyepieces. Here I'm just opening a random tube and this is the 20 times wide field eyepiece. This is the top part where you check the specimen and this side goes into the trinocular head. And unfortunately there is no rubber uh, piece for these things so I had to order them separately and I will install them when I get them and then this is the fifth uh, lens this is the 10 times dry objective so this is the one with the highest uh, magnification so 100 times so when I use it with the 20 times eyepiece then through the eyepiece I supposed to get uh, 2000 times magnification so that's the highest uh, nominal magnification that I can reach uh, through the optical elements. And of course, I will have to check uh, how much I can use this uh, piece because it's a relatively large uh, magnification. So then I might have uh, problems with the working distance and uh, other things. So yeah, it's a question if it's any useful. And then uh, these are the color filters. And uh, one is a blue one and another is a green one, as you can see. And uh, these color filters can be inserted into that free slot in the lamp house. Uh, they can be moved back and forth using the uh, small arm on them. But since they are not polarizing filters, uh, they don't have any effect. So it's just that uh, they have the freedom to move around. And at the time, as you can see, I can only insert one uh, filter. So either the blue one or the green one, but not uh, both at the same time. But of course, that would not make sense uh, anyway. And then finally, we have arrived to the main piece of the microscope. So this is the stage, the stand and the nose piece uh, together. And uh, this is basically the core of the microscope. And then all the attachments that I showed will be attached to this one. And if we look at this thing from the top, then the first thing that we see is the place for the trinocular head. And then of course we have these two knobs, which is the Z or focus adjustment. This one is the coarse adjustment. And below it, there is another knob with the scale, which is the fine adjustment. And each step on this scale is two micrometers. And then we have the XY stage or specimen stage. You can see that the smaller knob adjusts the position of the specimen on the X axis. And then this larger knob, which was quite hard to rotate, adjusts the position of the specimen on the Y axis. So you can move on an XY plane with these two knobs. And after shooting these clips, 
I also added some grease to the axis because they were a little hard uh, to move. And then if we look at the nose piece, we have four different objectives. We have one objective with five times magnification, another one with 10 times magnification, and then it is followed by a 20 times magnification objective, and finally a 40 times magnification objective. And there is a 100 times magnification objective too. From sideways, we can see the inlet for the light. This is the attachment for the lamp house. And then if I move the coarse Z axis, then the wall nose piece moves up and down. And if I move the fine adjustment, then you can see that the motion is barely uh, visible or barely noticeable. But when you look through the eyepiece, it will be visible. From the other side, again, just a different perspective. This is the left side of the stand. So that was the course, and this is the fine movement of the Z axis or focusing axis. So now let's attach the trinocular head on the nose piece. So we will attach this bottom part to the top part of this uh, microscope stand. So I just have to remove the caps from both this part and the trinocular head. And then I can put the trinocular head on top of the microscope stand part. And then uh, there are three set screws that uh, I have to adjust. So then everything will be centered and properly set up. Then the next thing is to install the eyepieces. First, we have to remove these protective caps. Then we can install the eyepieces. And first, I will pick the 10 times white field eyepiece. And I just simply drop it into the socket. And then I can install the other eyepiece in a similar way just by dropping it to the other socket. Then the next step is to install the light source. The flange has a really tight fit. So as you could see, I had to wiggle the light source on the flange. And then after installing it, there is a set screw, which I had to tighten. And that made sure that the lamp house will be tightly attached uh, to the rest of the microscope. So then let's uh, connect the light source to its uh, power supply. This is just a simple GX uh, connector with some uh, threaded attachment. So you can see that it's relatively easy to connect it to the power source. And then uh, there is this typical power supply cable which goes to the back side of this uh, light source power supply. And now I turn it on. So I adjust uh, the brightness a little bit. And then uh, now you can see that there is a spot. And if I move on the Z axis, then that spot goes out of focus. And if I change the intensity, then the spot can even disappear and then obviously reappear. And here you can see the effect of changing the aperture. So the brightness as well as the diameter of the beam also uh, changes. And with this, we actually can use the microscope. So I have this adapter here, which is a Sony E adapter to 23.2 millimeter diameter uh, tube. And this tube can go into this port as I will show it in a few moments. So you can see that this 23.2 millimeter tube perfectly fits the port. And then in the final assembly, the wall thing will look something like this, where I can have the camera on the top of the microscope. So now let's look at some objects and let's see how the camera performs. So you probably recognize this object. This is an SMD component solder tab. And uh, you can see that it is also coated with uh, something, let's say three dimensional. And uh, those puddles or splatters are actually uh, lead or Thin, and uh, they come from the uh, manufacturing process of the PCB. So the PCB is in as received uh, state. So I haven't touched it. Uh, so you can see the tabs in their original uh, condition. 
So here you can also see some topography on the tab or pad. So you can nicely observe how the uh, lead or tin is uh, covering uh, the tab. And then this one is a calibration slide at five times magnification. And then now I switch to 10 times magnification to see it as a, at a closer perspective. And each small division is 0 0.01 millimeters or 10 uh, micrometers. So this is quite a small uh, scale. And then uh, now I switched to the 20 times magnification uh, lens. So you can see that uh, I can get less and less parts of the uh, scale on the uh, display because obviously the magnification is increasing. And just as an additional information, that uh, square in the center is 100 times 100 micrometers large. And now as we have some well-defined features on the display, I can show you the effect of the aperture. So as you can see, if I close the aperture, the image becomes sharper, but of course then we get a smaller area visible in the display because we blocked part of the beam. And finally, I switch to the 40 times magnification lens. You can see that it is a bit challenging to focus because uh, it is uh, due to the flexing of the wall microscope. So even if I just touch the uh, fine adjusting knob a little bit, the wall structure flexes a bit. So then it uh, throws off the uh, focus. And another feature that you can uh, see on the picture is that purple fringe around the lines and that is the chromatic aberration. So at this high magnification, we also suffer from some image quality losses. And then uh, this guy is at five times magnification. It is a small uh, transistor and you can even see some uh, super glue uh, under the transistor. And I messed up the gluing a little bit, so the transistor is not uh, perfectly flat. So you can see that uh, not the wall uh, transistor surface is in focus because of the non-parallel uh, surface. But at least we can see something. So here we can see that I highlighted 100 micrometers. So if I uh, use the same magnification and I keep the scale on the display, you can see how large the features are. And now let's switch to an even higher magnification. So here we will see that uh, there is a very narrow band which is in focus and the rest of the surface is not in focus. And this is just due to the fact that the transistor is not uh, lying perfectly flat on the glass surface, which I used to support it. So then, of course, uh, I cannot focus the wall thing perfectly. And then while keeping uh, the same magnification, I went over to the scale again. So then using this calibration scale, we can highlight 100 micrometers again. And then I move back to the transistor while keeping the same magnification. And then uh, we can see that that 100 uh, micrometers scale is uh, compared uh, to the traces and uh, compared uh, to the wall uh, silicon die. So you can see that uh, this transistor has uh, rather small features. And then uh, let's uh, switch to another type of transistor. So you can see that this has a bit uh, different pattern inside, but uh, it has uh, some similarities uh, with the previous transistor. So it has some different patterns which uh, separate different areas. So basically those are the P and then uh, parts inside the semiconductor. So if I move the magnification a bit more up to 20 times magnification, then we can see the structures uh, more clearly. And what is maybe even more interesting is that we clearly start to see the grain structure of the silicon wafer. So all those uh, speckles and uh, the patterns are actually different uh, grains in the, in the silicon die. And if I further increase the magnification to 
40 times then we can see these uh, features especially the grains from a more closer perspective so you can see that uh, between these wavy lines we have those uh, different grains and if I move over uh, one of the golden wires then if I nail the focus I can actually see the fracture surface of the wire because I broke it off uh, from the surface and as you can see that as the focus is passing through the surface of the wire then we can see the fracture surface and then uh, finally here is just uh, the corner of the transistor just to see a bit more uh, features of this uh, piece of uh, electronics and regarding transistors let's uh, look at a bit more transistors at a time so this is coming from a microchip and you can see that uh, it has quite amazing patterns and it is really nicely resolved uh, with this microscope so we can see it uh, very nicely and uh, after a while I learned how to use the knobs uh, a bit more smoothly so you can see that uh, both X and Y directions are moving very uh, smoothly or relatively smoothly and if I increase the magnification after focusing the picture we can see those numbers a bit more uh, clearly so you can see that uh, now also more dirt is showing up on the uh, surface of this uh, silicon but uh, all the patterns and uh, the layers are more and more visible and probably you have also noticed some vignetting on the picture so you can see that the corners are somewhat dark and this is just uh, simply due to the adapter that I'm using with this camera but I already ordered another adapter with an optical element in it which is supposed to solve this issue and here is another chip and uh, now I start at a slightly lower magnification so I can fit nearly the whole chip in the picture but uh, actually if I change the magnification to a lower one uh, this one is the five times magnification then actually the wall chip uh, can be fitted in the uh, picture as you can see and that blob uh, in the background is actually the adhesion which uh, basically glues this small piece of uh, silicon into the uh, casing or housing of the chip itself so the packaging and then uh, moving back to the or towards the higher magnifications then we can see this uh, nice uh, chip structure again and uh, at even higher magnifications we can then see the structures obviously even better so once I manage to get the focus then you can see that uh, this is also a quite nice and interesting uh, structure with all those uh, straight lines and uh, interesting parallel uh, structures and then uh, this chip had some kind of let's call it signature or some kind of identification which is uh, this uh, group of four crosses or plus uh, signs and you can see that uh, one of these uh, crosses is etched a bit differently so once I get the focus you can see that that has a bit uh, more different uh, reflection so it has a bit kind of a rainbow uh, color and uh, basically this is what I uh, wanted to show you in this video so I showed you how this uh, microscope is equipped how it can be assembled and then I try to show you the basic features of it and uh, how it can be used how the different magnifications look like and so on and if you are interested in more details go to my website because I wrote a very detailed article about this with extra pictures and so on so please check the link in the description and I hope that this video was useful to you I hope you learned something and see you in the next video